Hey guys, how's it going? So I've had this question come up a lot lately in the comments, and this is pertaining to the Taurus G2C, G3C, even the G3 to a point. And this has to do with you guys saying that a lot of you are calling it the slide release, and we'll get into that in one second, but why is the slide catch so hard to push down? And you're wondering if there's just something wrong with the pistol or if it needs broken in. So I've replied this in the comments a lot. So those of you that only want to watch 30 seconds, the answer is your pistol is most likely fine. This being difficult to push down when the pistol is unloaded and the magazine's inserted is actually perfectly normal. And I'm going to explain to you guys why. And I'm also going to tell you how I manipulate the slide and the slide catch and some different scenarios that will hopefully help some of you out that are either newer to pistols or new to the Taurus G series, whether it's the G2C or the G3C. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And there's also links down in the description where you can help the channel. So I'm going to have my G2C here. I've got a G3C and the G3 and a couple other firearms <clears throat> that I will show you in just a second. So there's a couple different scenarios in which you would have a slide that was open and you need to release it, right? And the first scenario is this. You're just, you know, inspecting the gun, making sure it's empty, playing around with it, getting used to training. And you're in this position where the slide holds open on the last round and you want to close it, right? And I'm going to show you guys right now. This is my original G2C. It has quite a few rounds through it. And you're going to try to push down on this slide catch. And you're noticing it's really hard. As it is with this pistol. It's If I really force it, there we go. I can finally get it to go. But it seems like it's much harder than it should be. We're going to notice the same thing with the G3C. I really have to bear down. I can't just swipe it with the pad on my thumb. I have to really press on it. Now the G3, this is with the 17 round mag in it, right? Not as bad, but I still have to push pretty hard. I can't just naturally swipe. I have to really dig in there with my thumb. So, so far we're on the same page, right? Well, I know this is boring, but apparently a lot of people either didn't get one of these with their gun or just haven't read it. We're going to start off with the owner's manual. This is for the G2C, G2S. The same type of scenario is going to apply to all of these G-series of pistols from Taurus. So we're going to start off on page 16. And I'm going to note that what a lot of people call the release is actually called a slide catch by Taurus. And look. You guys know I'm not a gun snob. I could care less what you guys call stuff. Really, I don't care. But I want to emphasize that this is actually a slide catch. And that's going to help explain that it's not a release necessarily. And there's a difference. So we're going to look right here on page 16 of our Taurus manual. If for some reason you don't have this, you can download these. So we're going to see that it's clearly labeled slide catch right there. Okay. Now we're going to go to page number 26 in our manual. It shows us how to remove the magazine. For any of you that are really new, you just press this button right here. This is our magazine release button. Works just fine. We're going to load it with ammunition. And they're showing you how to rack or charge the firearm. And it shows you right here. This is illustration 3 on page 27. Of your manual hold the pistol with one hand keeping your finger away from the trigger insert and on the memory pad with the other hand pull the slide to its limit and release it so slide will go forward under recoil spring pressure and will insert one cartridge in the chamber the pistol is now ready to fire by pulling the trigger now I would note they didn't say to charge the firearm or to rack it or load it. We can call it. Again, I'm not a word snob. I just want you guys to know the difference here, you know. It did not say to hit the slide catch to release the slide. So let's simulate that. This is a dummy. It cannot fire. We're going to load it into our 12 round. I'm using the OEM magazines and all of these pistols that come with the firearm. 
So, I always give it a quick little wrap to make sure that it's fully seated, and it is. So we're going to go, and I'm doing this backwards because I'm on camera, but we're going to go here. Notice I'm keeping my finger, what we'll call, in the memory pad area. The main thing is you don't want it anywhere down in here to have an inadvertent trigger pull while chambering the firearm. So my finger's right here where they want it to be. I'm going to grasp the slide. I'm going to pull all the way to the rear. This is very important. Don't nurse it, just let go. And when I let go, I did indeed chamber the round, as we can see with the loaded chamber indicator on the G2C. We're going to safely dry fire this because, again, it is a dummy. So that is the way that Taurus, the manufacturer of your firearm, tells you they would like you to load it. Let's do it again with the G3C. It's going to be the same thing, but... I think this is an interesting topic and shows you guys that I do read the comments because a lot of people have asked me about this. Not one or two, but a lot. So hopefully this helps somebody out there. Okay, G3C. This is a much newer firearm. Has hundreds of rounds through it as compared to thousands of rounds through this original G2C. Same thing. I'm emphasizing this for all of you that are newer. You want to pull it to the rear really hard, you know, till it bottoms out all the way to the back and then just let go. Don't ride it forward. So we're going to go to the rear. Finger is outside of the trigger guard again. Let go. And it did chamber this round right here. And it worked just fine. Literally just by following the instructions from the manual. And I've done this many times before with success. Now, I know what a lot of you guys want to do. And again, it's probably going to work okay. I would do it the way I just showed because that's how I've always had the best lock as well as what the manual, you know, that was created by Taurus tells you to do. But I'll show you another way right now and I'll explain why it's so hard to do when you're not loading around and show you a little bit about how this slide catch actually works. So we're going to go back to the G2C again. And this is a scenario where, let's say we started off, okay. We started off with 12 rounds. We shot them all. It's empty. All right. And it held open. The last round held open the slide. Empty mag. We want to reload. So let's pretend this was ready to go. I'm going to put this round back in here. Now we have two options. We can do it just like I said before, pulling back to the rear. It will chamber the round. That's, in my opinion, the preferred way to do it. But what a lot of you want to do is you want to press down. On the slide catch, you're wanting to use it as a release. And if you notice, I was able to do it very easily. And it did indeed chamber that round. Now, why is that? Let's do it on the G3C. Just to show you guys that it's not an anomaly with just this pistol. It's going to be the way for any of these Taurus G-Series. So we're going to load up. G2C and G3C, by the way, use basically the same mags. Yeah, there's a slight, slight little scallop in the G3C for it to contour to the frame. It does help for pulling it out if it gets stuck during a malfunction. But other than that, they're the same mag, and I found them to be quite interchangeable. So, same thing. We're going to pretend on our G3C, which I'll show you guys how I did this, by the way. If you just want to lock the firearm, slide open. You're going to pull back. And then with your thumb, while it's all the way to the rear, you're going to push up on this release right here. So we're going to pull it to the rear. I'm pushing up with my thumb. It's hard to do when it's backwards, guys. Let me do this this way. I'm pushing up, keeping the pressure till I let go of the slide and it holds it. Much, much easier when you're not doing it backwards. But I'll leave that in there so you guys can laugh at me because it took me a couple tries. Okay. So whether you did it just like I am now, or whether you were at the range and the firearm ran empty, we're going to insert the magazine, and I'm going to push down on the slide catch with my thumb. Wow, that was so easy compared to how it was when there was an empty mag in it. Now let's get this out of here again, and I will show you guys one more scenario. So let's just say this. Say I'm shot my last magazine nine millimeters so expensive i can't afford to shoot anymore yeah ain't that the truth so i just want to kind of put it away for the day i know it's empty i've checked my chamber all that good stuff 
my mag's empty. Let's just put it away right now. Well, you can do two different things. You can either pull it to the rear and just let it go forward. That's easy. Or if you want to, you can just push down on the slide catch. And that also puts the slide forward and back into battery. We now know the pistol's empty. This is in a safe direction. I'm just gonna dry fire it once, make sure. Now I can put this away, store it however I would. So why is it so easy to push down on this catch if I have a round in the magazine or if it's empty? Here's why. We have our slide. It's a big chunk of steel with different milled openings and slots for it to perform all of its functions. We have a sheet metal tab here, and this is our slide catch. Now, if you know it, it's not going up right now because the slide has to be back in a certain position, and that's gonna allow the slide catch to go up into a little recessed groove. And you're not gonna really be able to see it too much on camera, but when you take it apart, you'll see there is indeed a little groove. We're looking right in this area here. There's a little groove in the slide that's milled in just right for this to be able to kind of dovetail in there. Now, what's actually holding it in place? Well, when there's no magazine holding it in place, it's simply our scrunched up recoil spring that used to extend all the way out to the front, it's now compressed. So basically we have lots of pressure that's making this want to go forward. Well, the slide is resting on the rear portion of this piece of sheet metal. So it's a little bit of effort to push it down, but not a whole lot because there's absolutely nothing underneath this little sheet metal slide stop that's holding it up. It just has pressure on the rear. So I'm gonna do that one more time. It's locked open. I can push this down with relative ease because it only has pressure acting on it from the rear of the firearm. So let's look at it this way. Say my finger was the slide catch and I'm trying to make it go down, right? To get it out of the little groove so the slide can go forward. If I have pressure only pushing this way, Yes, I can move my finger downward. There's a little drag and you can feel it. You know, you're pushing on it, right? There's a little drag, but I can still operate up and down. So not a big deal. Why is it so hard then when I've got this scenario? Well, that's because we are now holding the slide catch up, okay? In the locked position with two different opposing forces against it. The same one I just mentioned before, right? The pressure from the recoil assembly all right also from the magazine pushing up on it because check this out you guys probably already know this but i'm just trying to explain why a little bit look at this if i don't touch this slide catch this does not hold open on the last round with no magazine in there so there's something in the magazine that's acting like my thumb is so if there's no mag in there i have to basically take and push up with my thumb now my thumb's no longer holding and it's just the pressure from the spring. That has to do with, in your magazine, this yellow portion's the follower. And you're gonna notice it's shaped to where the cartridge can feed, bullet first, into the chamber. Now look at right here, there's a little squared off ledge. It's nice and flat there, and that's flat for a reason. And that is so that as the follower goes up to the top and your magazine's empty, this is actually going to push on your little slide catch. So basically, pretend my finger's the slide catch. I'm going to push down on it, and there's spring pressure fighting up against my finger. So that should explain it. Not only when I go to push this down, when the firearm's in this condition, inserted empty mag, right? No round in here whatsoever. It's so hard because A, I've got pressure pushing on the back side of this catch, just pushing on it, making it want to go forward. So I have to overcome that part of it. Also, I have to compress the spring. There's obviously a spring underneath your magazine follower that feeds and pushes these 12 rounds of ammunition up into the chamber area of the barrel, right? And it's actually quite a bit. Just push down with this on your finger and you'll see. And I think that's why these 12 round mags actually work so good and these Taurus pistols because it's a very robust and high pressure spring. So you're literally sitting there. You don't have the luxury of using your whole tab of your finger, right? Nope, just this little area. Just this little flat area has to push this whole thing down. Now, if you take your finger and just try to push it down with that, it's actually quite difficult. Not to mention you also have 
rearward pressure sandwiching it the other way. So you're overcoming two different forces, an opposing force this way and also one that's wanting to push up on it while you're trying to get it down. Now you can overcome it, but it does feel difficult. Now, one more thing. Why would it be then when I put a round in here, as I showed you before, we're gonna lock it open. This isn't bad, okay? Not bad at all, because we only have the one opposing force making contact with the back. Let's put a round in here, and it's easy. Like it's nothing, right? Here's why. The slide catch only extends so far down. It's enough to where when the magazine's empty, it will push it down enough, right? To get this follower out of the way and allow the slide to go forward. Allow the catch to get out of its way and let the slide to go forward. But when you put a round of ammunition in here, watch what happens to this yellow follower. Kind of common sense, but I'll show you. We're pushing down, right? See, I've only put it part of the way in there. And we can already see the front of this follower. Here's where it used to be. See how it's standing about a bullet width proud of the top of the front of the magazine. Now we're going to push down on that follower, load it up. See how it barely sticks up. Now let's come over here. No longer is that little ledge sticking up high enough to actually interfere with the slide catch. So since the slide... Since the side catch portion of the follower is gone, it's out of the way. There's no longer that upward pressure pushing up on this lever that you're trying to push down. So now you're back to square one again. It should be about the same doing it this way as it is with no magazine. We're just dealing with the pressure that's trying to drive it forward. We barely push down and it works. Now, most semi-automatic firearms that were made in the last half century, there's going to be some exceptions, especially when you get into like Comblock, Military Surplus, and others that I don't have time to get into today. Most are going to have a last round. Okay, hold open. Very similar to these Taurus firearms, G3C, G2C. And I showed you guys how it all worked on the G3C a little bit more. Keep in mind, this is the same technology. There are differences in the guns. And I do plan to do a side-by-side -side on them soon. But for purposes of this video, this is all the same thing over and over again. G3C works the same way. But most, most modern pistols have something along the lines of this. Some will call them a slide release. Taurus calls it a mag catch. Now, I'll show you one more way you can do this. And with the G3, I would note, it's still difficult to do. Maybe a teeny bit easier than the smaller ones. But even with this 17 round mag, we're looking at the same scenario. We're going to drop the mag. Easy as pie, right? Now, there's one more thing that Taurus says you can do. And I'll show you what, you can, what I do sometimes, too. Let's just say this. Say, I know this gun's empty. I've checked it. Now, you really should remove the mag. Make sure it's empty that way. Inspect the chamber. It's empty. I prefer to just do this and put the mag back in. Okay, that takes too much time. You don't want to do that. I get it. So here's a scenario. We're locked open on the last round. Same thing. Empty mag. We verified it's safe. This is really hard to do. I don't feel like stubbing my finger. Check this out. If you look, it's locked to the rear, but check it out. There's a little play still. See that? Not much. Okay. You can hear it more than you can feel it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand, pull to the rear, to where it's completely locked back. Now when I push down with my thumb, I'm going to keep it pressed down. Now it goes right forward, let up on my thumb. So it's basically like this. Pull it back to the rear just to take the pressure off of this slide catch. Now you can push it down, keep it held down with your thumb, let go, and you're good. One more time, because it's kind of hard to explain it. Just watch how I'm doing it. Does that help? Again, there could be some weird scenario where you have something wrong, but I bet you 99% of you, this isn't a problem. I would also know that all different stages, the three or four different ways I showed you, you can do this. It does get a little bit easier with time. You know, the metal does kind of mesh up with the metal sheet metal tab that interfaces with the slide on this catch. Everything wears in. The springs take a little bit of a set. and You don't have as quite as much 
force from the compression of your recoil spring assembly once it gets broken in is when it's new. So you should see it get a little easier as time goes on, which is cool. The next question is this. See, this is really hard on this G3C. Like, too hard. I totally get it, guys. Look, we're probably just not quite using the pistol the way it was designed when we do this. So to me, it's real easy. I'm just going to pull to the rear, push down, goes forward. Or I'm just going to drop that mag. One more thing, and I'm going to show you a couple other pistols. I don't think this is a problem. And here's why. When, and you guys can chime in down in the comments. I'm sure I'm missing something, and it's cool. But I don't ever see a scenario where I'm going to be in a hurry. I'm so clear, right? When am I ever going to be in a really, really big hurry to hurry up and close that firearm slide, right? on an empty mag like I'm already empty or I wouldn't be in this condition right now I could see myself wanting to hurry up let's just pretend I had another mag here the mags empty I drop the mag I grab my loaded mag I could see myself in a hurry then but I just did it because once I put that round in there now it's like butter so this doesn't affect mag changes if you guys want to do that now me when I'm on the range I'll still go like this because I feel that's a more reliable way to load the firearm but one more time let's pretend we ran out we discarded the empty mag set it aside put in our loaded mag look at that i can push the slide catch down and it loads it just fine so if you're in a hurry to get that next round in there which obviously there's many scenarios where you would want to do that this isn't a problem okay it's also not a problem if for whatever reason you took your mag out and you just wanted to get it closed real quick. I don't know why, in this scenario, I'm not planning on reloading the firearm. I'm totally empty. I'm not putting in another mag. I don't think I'm ever going to be in such a hurry, okay, where I have to really quick just get it closed in a tenth of a second so I can put it in the range bag and take it home. I think I know what you guys, you guys know what I'm saying, right? I have time to come back here, take a little of the pressure off, push down, and then it works fine. Or conversely, I have time to either drop that mag and just do one of these, put it back then, and, and hey, YouTube's a funny place. One of you will find a reason why you need to speed, close the slide on an empty chamber with an empty mag as fast as you can. And if that's the case, then maybe this firearm isn't for you, but these are great firearms, and I really don't see where we need to do that. But hold on, 2A EDU. I have a... I knew you guys were going to ask that next. I've got you. Don't worry. I got you guys. All right. Somebody said, well, my CZ75. All right. And this is a Tanfoglio Witness P. It's empty. And it locked back on an empty magazine. Works very similar to how these Tauruses work. It's the same thing. We have a lever over here that interfaces with the slide. It also has that squared off portion. They're a little bit different on each firearm, but this is very similar. There's that little squared off ledge. It's pushing up on the slide catch to pull the slide back. Last round hold open, we could call this. We could call it, call it whatever you want. Now watch this. Empty mag. I'm going to push down. Like it's nothing. This particular firearm is easy as heck to do that with. Empty mag, whole nine yards. Now I can still do the other things. I can still bring it to the rear, push down, just like I did on the Taurus, right? I can also release the magazine. Just pull the slide back and let it go home. These pistols, even though they're different actions and all that, they work fundamentally the same. But there's a big difference here. First of all, this spring isn't nearly as hard to push down. Like, not even close. I can push this follower down with ease. This is the main force acting up on it. So, big difference, right? The other thing is this. Look at this slide catch lever. This thing has a huge pad for your finger that not only comes up but juts out. You can see there's a substantial ledge here where you can put your finger. Also, look how long this is. Comparing that with uh, G3C... Here, let me cock this open. You guys will really see the difference here. It's not even close. So we have this little teeny piece of sheet metal just barely sticking up on the G3C. 
barely sticking out from the firearms frame. Now look at this on the CZ. Three times longer. This ledge sticks out twice as much. This is all just a pendulum effect. It's like when your skinny little butt sits on the end of the teeter-totter and then 2A EDU sits more towards the middle, you can still pick me up because you have more leverage. Same thing, guys. Just a leverage effect right here. So your CZ, not a problem on an empty mag. For you old school guys, because somebody mentioned their Browning high power. This is an FEG, Hungarian high power. Single action, pistol. It also holds its slide open on the last round, and we are empty. Now this is gonna start to look like the G3C a lot. Little teeny sheet metal deal here. Browning high power, it's also small, very small. But it does stick out a little further than the Taurus, but check this out. All of a sudden this is even longer than the CZ by far. Look how long this thing is. It literally goes from here all the way forward. So this is probably six times larger than the little guy on the G3C. So guess what's gonna happen? I barely even touched it. Like check this out. Now this firearm has a lot of rounds through it. You can tell it's probably been through the war and back, but at the same time, we just have a different mechanism that's super, super long. Now, the small diminutive slide catch on the G3C, G2C, etc. makes it where it's not very much leverage to push down. And that's why we really don't want to do it in this condition. But it makes it much easier to conceal. Takes up less space and, you know, smaller holsters, all these things. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just there's no free lunch with guns. You want to get everything nice and compact, which these guns are very compact. Very. You end up with small little features like this. Not to mention that firearms, when they're new, such as this, Browning High Power, CZ variants do cost a little more money. And that's some of the upgrades or luxuries you get when you spend a little bit more money on a firearm a lot of times too. So I think it's kind of both. Now I will tell you this. On the CZ, as nice as this is, as long as it is, it's a little bit too far out for me. And I think a lot of you guys are going to notice the same thing that shoot CZs. I really have to kind of roll my grip up higher than I want to and kind of alter my grip to get my thumb. That's just because it's kind of in a bad location with the manual safety basically being in its way. So at the end of the day, as easy as this is to actuate, it's actually not much easier than the G3C. All right. If you're not asleep yet, I appreciate you watching. I just wanted to give a one-time once very thorough explanation like I tend to do because this question has been coming up a ton. I think there's some rumors out there. I think there's some of you guys that are brand new to guns and you're kind of freaking out over some of these things like this. Look, I'm not going to make fun of you. You need to know your firearm. I would note, always read your owner's manual. As I state in all of my unboxings, there's some valuable information in here and a bunch of lawyers speak, you're kind of getting all of it in there. So don't feel bad. Don't feel embarrassed. I'm seriously hoping this helps somebody. If not, I just wasted my time. But I think you're going to be all right. There's probably nothing wrong with your firearm at all. So try some of those other different techniques that I gave you. Now that you understand why it works the way it does, just go to sleep at night and look forward to saving up for some 9mm and go and shoot your new pistol. Get used to it and keep on supporting the Second Amendment. Alright, thanks for watching and have a good one.